Hello and welcome. KiCad 8 is out. Now, if you're completely new to KiCad, I'll link to a good Phil's Lab intro to get you started. Here, I want to focus on some of the recent goodies to help you get the most out of KiCad, and I'll show you my favorites so you can do more faster. Now, it's not just about speed, though I do love speed. It's about flow. And I love being in flow even more than being fast. So I'll be demoing features that let you do cool new things, but also little diversions into the optimizations I use to stay focused more on the design than on the tool being used. So let's get to it. So here's a schematic in KiCad 8 RC3. And the first thing you may notice is that it has something of a unicorn bar theme going on. What can I say? I like the extra dimension provided by colors. Now, this isn't all new to KiCad 8, and I've talked about the new net colors uh, before, but I want to make a few notes about the good and bad here. First off, net classes aren't just for PCB layout. You can set them up here too. Uh, so let me create a new one. Booyah, and give it a color. Now, when assigning net classes, you can use net names, uh, basic wildcards or regexes, which, as you can see, I really love. Personally, I'd rather they have forced uh, real regular expressions. Star clock here isn't that, but mostly it just does what you want, and the list of matching nets lets you know it's working. Anyhow, let's assign some nets to this new class, and something I love is that it's mostly reflected automatically in the PCB layout. So in PCB new here, uh, the new class and the net assignment are already present. So now I like to set all my classes while making the schematic, and then uh, when it's time to lay out, I just come in here and just need to specify the clearance and other rules for all the tracks. And that's really cool. Something less cool is that all these colors and assignments aren't reflected, so if you want those in the layout, you'll have to do that here too. I guess it's nice that they can be different in this context, but it's more work and can lead to confusion. I don't know. About the integration of EE Schema and PCB New, I have always loved how you can operate in whichever context is appropriate and swap operations around. Grabbing things organized in the schematic during floor planning is super useful. I use focus on hover, so I need only select here, slide to here, and then start operating. That's surely a thousand less clicks a day. Anyway, something you might notice is just how much I use the hotkeys. The improvement here is the alternates, which I think is new, but I don't really use. The main thing I want to say about hotkeys is reassign them. I work with my right hand on the mouse and left always on the home row. So don't mind the specific keys here because of course I don't use a standard keyboard, but the point is get your left hand busy and happy and keep the right hand on the mouse. I want it easy and consistent. Here are the important ones. Uh, to me, adding a wire is the same as laying a track, so it's the same hotkey. Duplication is a common thing, so that's one hotkey. Moving, rotating, dragging. With those four set up consistently and after a tiny bit of learning, you're a productivity machine uh, in both scam and layout. So this is what my keyboard looks like in the end from the point of view of my left hand. Doesn't take too long to get used to, and it's a game changer. But check this out. I like my grid fat and usually use 100 mil. But text needs more flexibility, and I used to have to switch between grids, and then I'd forget to switch back. Even if I didn't, it's a pain. Uh, no more. In Pref schematic editor grids, you can set things up so KiCad will switch grids depending on context. That's sweet. Now, there's something similar in layout, but I haven't had the same level of success there. I don't know if it's a bug or if I'm not using it right. The properties panel here, uh, I don't use a ton for a couple of reasons. First off, because here I am more or less centered on the screen, and if I want to edit something, I'd have to click the symbol and then move all the way to the panel to do anything, whereas my left hand is right here on the E hotkey already, and when the dialog comes up, there's my mouse ready to rock right there. If only tab would let me go down the field values rather than this, my life would be complete in this department. Wow. And the other thing is that if I'm here, it'll often be for the extra fields like MPN or whatever. And these custom fields don't show up in the panel, uh, at least not yet. So meh. And one great use for the panel is stuff like this. Uh, for lots of things, I find group operations like this quick and more intuitive than opening up the bulk edit. Cool. See the signal here? It goes to a bunch of places, including into a subsheet. Tracking it around can get pretty tedious. So if you view ShowNet Navigator, look at that. You can see everything it's connected to, including pins and labels, and that's useful. Not too sure how it decides whether to have the hierarchy open or not. It's remembering something I just don't know what, but I like this. Same goes with search. So this is your classic search, and it's just a control F away, and it lets you see big picture uh, with highlighting and cycle through the results. Very cool. But if you go to view show search panel, you get this. Downside here is there's a mouse involved, but it's nice in that it split things up by type. And it's great for searching text, and double-clicking one of the results will be like finding the symbol and pressing edit. So, cool. Now, with nothing in the search box, it shows you everything and lets you sort by reference, position, contents. It's pretty nice. Oh, another thing on this front is that these boxes are dockable. Drag them out, and you can place them and leave them floating, or place them anywhere. 
Control G by default to show hide the search panel and it shows up where you last docked it. Also nice that it brings the focus in, so just start searching. If you want to leave the box, tab out then Control G again. You can also have a shortcut to show hide the properties manager. I used Control P for that uh, since it's not like I really need a hotkey for printing schematics. Uh, final two things in schematic entry. The power is finally editable. Uh, you don't have to create a new symbol. So just edit the label and now you have whatever power flag you want and they work like they should. This is going to be very useful. And the last thing in Skim is they finally set us up the bomb. The bomb and bulk edit are now connected, just tabs of the same dialog. However you've set up the bulk edit fields is reflected in the CSV that'll come out. If you add a field, it's there, say MPN, and the group by is respected as well. That's great, may no longer need my custom bomb export scripts, huzzah. Okay, beyond schematic capture now. The simulation just keeps getting better. It's worth a whole video on its own, uh, which is on the stack. But for now, I'll just say that I really like the back annotation. Check this, we'll do an operating point analysis and <laughs> beautiful. And if we run an AC sweep on this low frequency, low pass filter, the differential curves let us see we're 20 dB down in less than 400 Hertz or whatever else is interesting. So I'll get back to that. But if you do simulation, it's getting pretty awesome. In terms of layout, I don't have much more to say except that the 3D viewer is getting pretty sweet to work with. It has layers you can turn on or off. Uh, looks nice, behaves well. You can still hide the through holes or SMDs, of course, but also any of the individual layers, which is very nice. Ray tracing isn't the fastest thing on my machine, but it gives some beautiful results. One thing I think will be useful is this. If you create some random polygon, well, you don't have the option for silk or whatever, but if it's on a metal layer, you get this extra field, which lets you associate it to any net. You may have noticed I like my rat's nest line there uh, quite visible. I do like them fat. You can set this in preferences under editing options. Okay, so that was a bunch of interesting features. I'm going to do a whole walkthrough using those and more. And uh, when that's published, I'll uh, have it pop it up somewhere here. So, and link it in the description. So if you're still here and thought this was worth watching, let me know with a like. If there are any other features or techniques or tricks that you know of, uh, I'm an avid collector. So please let me know. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Cheers.